in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Behind the exploits of great men in the kingdom is the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Unassisted by the spirit of grace, you cannot produce results that is consistent with the might and the power of God. No man can do these things except God be with him. No man can do these things except God be with him the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following the lord walking with them confirming the word following you read from scripture and you read even through modern history all of the men and women especially within the church circle who were mightily used by God in their generations. They were men and women, some uneducated, some weak. Some came from backgrounds of all kinds of things. Regardless of those limitations, you listen to their story. The punchline in their story is when they encountered this spirit of God called the Holy Spirit. At that point, things began to shift in their lives. Ordinary women encountered the Spirit of God. And some of them, though naive, though uneducated, inexposed, he began to help them and they commanded levels of dominion and power that was global. Regardless the limitations that came with their generation. Let me tell you one truth. There is no describing how far the Spirit of God is able to take a man and to help a man. I am saying it to you today. If you ever see anybody that you admire, whether used by God in ministry like your man of God or in business, any dimension of kingdom exploit, provided it is revealing Jesus, the signature of the Spirit must be there. By this teaching, immediately God is telling someone, if you don't give up on your strength, you will only recycle last year, this year. Regardless what prophecy comes, by ignoring the Holy Spirit, you will abort the potency of the word. The Bible said the seed was the word, yet it still died because of the soil it came upon. Are we together now? Yes. I learned this very early. How helpless a man can be in ministry respectfully speaking there are people in ministry struggling from pillar to post trying all kinds of formulas in isolation to the ministry and the help of the holy spirit and they find out that by the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail the world is too busy too selfish and too wicked for people to dedicate their attention to you it takes a force that is not human to coordinate people to look at you know you love no no except you do not you've not lived long enough in this world what will make a man wake up from his house and think about you and call you and say for the rest of your life i want to bless you that man who wants to bless you has relatives who are in need it does not just happen listen to me very carefully you are a man of god just because you are sincere and a person of character it's not enough to make people leave their homes to come and to submit to sit down to listen and to learn no 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 how about resources it is one thing to have your skill like peter and you will be at the sea and yet you will not catch fish at that point you don't need fishing again you need a superior dimension of help it is not because you are in abia it is simply because there is a dimension of grace and help that you have not accessed this is my assignment tonight 
to introduce you to take away struggling and weariness and bring us to a point where you are empowered by a dimension of sufficiency that you will walk out of this meeting tonight rejoicing knowing that every prophetic word that came from the man of God to you was spoken because he expected that in receiving it you will honor the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make it come to pass if Jesus the son of the living God did not ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit as the word incarnate he made himself so helpless the Bible even said of no reputation and he would speak again and again by the Spirit the Spirit was behind the mighty things that Jesus did a carpenter's son who became the savior of the world in fact the Bible even says if that same spirit that raised him raised him that body was lying down there and the spirit of grace came raised him back to life again hallelujah yeah. we have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit largely and even those who talk about the Holy Spirit only focus on his power and they do not even care about a relationship to understand the dynamics of his help. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the most classic scripture that talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. This was a statement by Jesus himself. He said, but you shall receive power after. Somebody say power after. The sequence matters. Power after. Power is only relevant when it comes after not power before not power during power after the holy ghost power after the holy ghost power after the holy ghost wisdom after the holy ghost miracles after the holy ghost he must precede them all and he must be greater than them all but here is what we do power through or by the Holy Ghost. We are not interested in the relationship. I hear you hold power to heal the sick, to open up doors, to bring finances. Can you borrow me that power so I can shine while you stand? I don't need you. I just know that something about you can make me powerful. But follow the protocol. Power after. Power after. Check this against your, the, your Christian pursuit. If your power, your quest for power is before the ministry of the Holy Ghost, you are already at the corridors of compromise. <clears throat> when God calls you, he does not give you power. When he calls you, he gives you himself. He said, come, follow me, not follow it. Follow me. When God calls you, he does not even give you an assignment. Your calling is to God. Your mission is now to the world. When he calls people, he does not call them to do things. He calls them to follow him follow me and i will make you when i make you i now send you the empowerment is at the point of being sent not being called you see when he calls you you don't need power you need humility to learn when he sends you he now sends you with power most of us have been called but we have not been sent and the reason is you will know you have not been sent because the power that backs up your being sent has not been given but the itch to go it is true that your calling is genuine, but have you been sent? He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? The plethora of lack and insufficiency is proof that the door has not been opened for you. That means you should stay, follow me, not follow it. I don't know if God is speaking to someone. He's saying many things to many of us. For some of us, God is saying, mark time with this ministry thing and get back to the secret place. The truth is that the power that follows the assignment has not yet come. You cannot hide, you cannot hide power. It's like pregnancy. A woman who is nine months and is not aware, will she look normal? Even if she does not know what is wrong, she cannot be normal. Not at nine months. Such as I have. My point is, when did he know he had it? Because once upon a time, he did not have it. And he knew he didn't have it. Now he has the boldness to say, Mister, I know what I have and I, don't, I know what I do not have. I'm still learning about prosperity. Silver and gold I do not have. I'm still learning. I can't, I can't guarantee on that. But this one, I have it already. 
Are we together now? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit helped our infirmities. Let me just show you quickly and then we pray. Three ways the Holy Spirit helps men to become mighty and to advance. You call it a run conference. I hope you know what progress is. Please look up. Progress means your next step must always be greater than your first step your initial one if your next step is at the same level with the former one it is not called progress it is called maintenance listen watch this if i move this way there is motion but this cannot be called progress for it to be called progress my next step must be beyond the former one the next one must be so if you say i should come if you say i should run and i do this am i running the next step has to be is that true that means your least month this year should be january if any month by any means becomes greater than january in result and impact you have compromised on the definition of progress for the path of the just is that still in your bible is as a shining light that shined more and more i like the word more and more more and more it says unto the perfect day so let's deal with this in a few minutes that we have is god helping us the help of the spirit the secret behind the sufficiency of ordinary men the principal factor that is responsible for the mysterious rising and the results that ordinary men command as far as the revelation of Jesus is concerned in their world. Now you know by now that when I talk about producing results, it is with respect to the revelation of Jesus and bringing him glory. When we teach from a kingdom perspective, we don't just teach from a standpoint of an ambition and mundane desire to make things happen. Our entire pursuit, the moment we talk about result, it is with respect to the revelation of Jesus. You remove that out of the equation, your pursuit does not have any value. What gives value to prosperity, anointing, ministry, is that in that activity, Jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified. Is that true? Yes. It's called the reflection principle. In John 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed a prayer and says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. So how is the, the father glorified? When he glorifies the son. Are we together? Number one. How does the Holy Spirit help the believer to rise, to excel, to command results in this kingdom? Number one, by revealing the mind or the will of God. The first dimension of the help of the Spirit to the believer is the revelation of the mind or the will of God. This is very, very important. Two scriptures very quickly. Romans chapter 8, please, and verse 27. Romans 8 27 the bible says and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god please someone shout it say the will of god, will of god. one more time say the will of, god. the will of god now the way god designed the administration of spiritual power please look up the administration of spiritual power and even the ministry of the holy spirit is that everything revolves around the will of God. Are we together now? The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God or to keep you in the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. Listen very carefully. One of the ways you attract the power of God is staying in the will of God. If you are out of the will of God and he brings his power called his mercy, the assignment of that dimension of his power is to bring you into the will of God. Is that true? So it's important as a rule of thumb, the entire circumference of the believer's life must revolve around and within the will of God. If and when you are in the will of God, the power of God keeps you and you... you once you are in the will of God, that is where your immunity is established. 
once you are in the will of God, that is when your relevance, the moment you are outside of the will of God, you are outside of the region where you make yourself a prey to Satan. Are we together now? Provided the prodigal son was in the house, there was nothing that could happen to him. No lack, no insufficiency. The moment he went out of the house and out of the covering of his father, depletion began until he got to a point where he fed with the swine. Notice that in his restoration, all that he did was to return back home. That was it. That was all he did to return back home. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. And he got up and did exactly what he said he would do. He's returning back to the house. Celebration began immediately. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit helps men, he reveals to us the will of God for our lives part time. Romans chapter 12, please. When you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye present or offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice. He calls it holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Listen carefully now. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. So everything the Holy Ghost does through the word in your mind is to bring you and keep you in the will of God. Are we together? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost to bring you into the will of God. Jesus himself found where it was written concerning him. Is that in your Bible? Luke chapter 4. He found where it was written concerning him and then he began to quote the scripture or to read it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. When he was done, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He found where it was written concerning him. And the Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes, he will guide you in, in all truth including the will of God. There are many people today, listen carefully please, there are many people today who are farming like Elisha, whereas their destiny is to be prophets over nations. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit. There is no guessing the will of God. You don't even know it. There is no possibility of knowing it. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father. The Bible said no man knows what is in the heart of a man except the spirit of that man. The moment you begin to pray in the spirit, I wish we had time to deal with this. Among the many things that happen is that you cooperate with the Holy Spirit to begin to search the archives in the mind of the Father. What is in the heart of the Father for you in 2023? It is a risk to start taking steps on assumption. You have to wait until the will comes. The trigger for your action is the knowledge of the will. As a man of God, don't assume that God wants you to expand. Don't assume that God wants you to start doing church. Don't assume that God wants you to organize a healing meeting. No, it is important that you walk. Your confidence is knowing that you are in the will of God. In fact, Apostle John was teaching us on prayer and he said, this is the confidence that we have. Is that still in your Bible? That when we ask anything according to his will, we know that he heareth us. So I don't know that I'm hurt just because of the volume of what I'm saying or because of the time expended in prayer, as important as that is. My confidence is that I am, God is so determined to make us walk in his will that he created a system of capturing that will as scripture and still left it, still in addition with the Holy Spirit, so that we are entire in his will. Someone say the will of God. Say it again. There are many of us right now, we need to go back and ask God. This movement have been moving around the circle. Today, I think I'm a man of God. Tomorrow, maybe a businessman. Next week, I, 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 it's like I had Zamfara. Then next week, it's like I had Portacot. You need to take away that, those haziness. Where Satan deceives believers is becoming like an angel of light. And that whole assignment is to make you sincerely veer out of the will of God. Satan does not necessarily need to fight you by attacking you. If he can take you out of the will of God, it was designed to destroy you by default he 
Is someone learning? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost. You ask your man of God, how did he start his prayer platform? If you think it's just luck, do it. That's when you will see the difference between the will of God and the strength of a man. When it is the will of God, simple and even foolish things produce results that for your lifetime you cannot explain because the jealousy of God is behind it. God can speak to a man. I remember years ago, this was way before just, you know, social media was just at its infancy in Africa when God gave me a word. At that point, he told me, he said, do not, he was in the place of prayer. He said, carry your teachings, raw audio, not really very clear, the best of whatever we could do at that time. And he said, all you need to do, this is my instruction, this is what I want. Put it and make it available for people and my angel will take it to the nations of the earth. That foolish instruction. You see, you can copy today and it will not work because it didn't come as a revelation of the will of God. This is the danger of blindly copying things. You can be inspired, but be sure you are in the will of God. Moses said, I'm not going to go and embarrass myself before Pharaoh. One, verify you are the one sending me. Number two, give me a sign. I know who Pharaoh is. When he stood before Pharaoh and said, Thus said the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. You would think Pharaoh say, my God. I'm sorry, who is that God that I offended? He laughed and he said, you must be silly Moses. I think you've forgotten that this is Egypt, the center of wizardry. So this is all you came to do to embarrass yourself here? Janus and Jambers, come and show him that if it is a rod he brought to become a snake, go back and tell your God is not powerful enough. And they turned it effortlessly. You would think because the power of God were there automatically, it should become the rod of, um, of, of Janus and Jambas should not even become a serpent. But it became a serpent right there. To the point that you could not know which one is real or which one is fake. But then God did something powerful. The rod of Moses swallowed the rod of, 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 of Pharaoh and did not increase in size. And he held one and kept it. The God of heaven. Listen to me. Our confidence in doing the things that we do is knowing that we have paid the price with the Spirit to verify and re-verify that we are in the will of God. When you are in the will of God, it does not matter who believes or who does not believe. The most important thing is that the jealousy of the one who sends you is behind and before you. For someone, God can speak to you and say, listen, People in Abia State are waiting. You are the next entrepreneur to rise. And while he's speaking, one of the ways you will know that God is speaking to you is because you cannot do what he's saying by your strength. If God tells you something you have the power to do, most likely he's not the one you heard. He will tell you what only him can do through you. If it is God that you hear what you heard should make you afraid. It should make you run back to him and say, so how do we make this happen? How do you look at an ordinary man, no one, say build an ark that will take all the animals? Three stories. He didn't say, are you an architect? He didn't say, have you tried building a small boat? That's God for you. God can look at someone, you have never stood before any president and he will speak to you say, the 12 presidents I'm sending you to, make sure you preach Christ to them. And while he's speaking, you do not even have a passport. God for you. He will speak in a way that you must return back to him for the remaining details. If it is not God, listen, one of the ways you know you are in the will of God is you will never hear everything the first time. <laughs> there are details you will hide and it is only your hunger that will take you. Hallelujah. The will of God. Let's finish up. Number two, how does the Holy Spirit help the saints to rise and to excel? The ministry of guidance. The Holy Spirit helps men by guiding them. Number one is the revelation of the will of God. Number two is to guide you. John 16, we read it earlier, 12 and 13. 13 says, 
that when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth please look up this is powerful I wish I had time to explain this scripture for you. That means even when you are standing in the truth, you must be guided for it to profit you. Just because you are in proximity with the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it. The truth can kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless automatically. Truth is like a knife. You can hold a knife in a way that it will injure you. A knife that is supposed to cut the vegetable to make the food that we eat. Because you did not hold it well, it can still injure you. Women will tell you there are times that they did not hold the knife well. And they ended up injuring themselves. The, a beautiful tool that was supposed to help enhance your efficiency. When Satan tries to use a lie and it does not work, he will use the truth to kill you. Ask Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said, it is written. The next time Satan spoke, he said, it is written too. Since it is truth, let's use truth now. It is written. Sanctify them by your truth, he says. Thy word is truth. So it is not every time he will come looking like a wizard. There are times he will speak like a preacher and mislead you with relevant scriptures into derision. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. The Holy Ghost. This is where many people who just embrace scripture and ignore the Holy Spirit. This is a piece of literature. This is a piece of archaeology. This is a piece of history. When you open it, it is a book. When the scrolls are unlocked, it becomes the word. This book you see must be both opened and unlocked. There are seals that close it. It is opened to the optical eyes, but not yet open in the spirit. And it is dangerous to read the book when it is just open and not unlocked. Because you will find many coincidences. At the end of it, you will end up hating the Bible. Because it will look like a mix of nonsense. Written by people, arguments here and there. A lying spirit came from the Lord. What does that mean? Do not be over-righteous. What does that mean? Because all those things are unfruitful to the mind. If the only thing you do is to open the book. Only the spirit sustains the, the capacity. And you will see a scripture you've been reading forever. And you will stand in tears. There are times that you can carry one verse for days and you are sitting there and it's as if you found a gold mine and you are rejoicing over a scripture. You quote it and someone says, that's nice, you are learning scripture. But something in the name of Jesus, the miracle of open eyes, guided by the spirit in the name of Jesus, may that begin to work in your life from tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guides men. There are various ways he guides. There is a difference between leading and guiding. Or there is a difference between direction and guidance. Let me tell you how to direct. Please look up. If I'm to direct you out of this auditorium, here's what I'm going to say. Move straight, turn right, and be on your way. That's direction. Guidance will say, follow this way. There is a step. Be careful. That step can hurt you. So just because you know the road, you do not know the contours, the very things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides. He does not just lead. He leads, but he guides. Many of you have been led. You need guidance. You are in the place of the will of God, but how to navigate the steps, now you do not know. He told you this man is the one who God will use to lift you. Now you are with him. But what do you do? Do you walk up to him and say, you have been wasting my time. God said you are the one who will live. You see, now direction is correct, but you need guidance. It's the Holy Spirit who will guide you and say, you know what? Um, take a meal and just go and give him and bless him and don't say anything. That's guidance. You now go there and say, oh, who is this? What do you do? I am so, so, so and so. Thank you. You are the kind of person we are looking for. See me tomorrow. Two of you can be led, but only one was guided. Most people have not opened up themselves to be guided by the Spirit. You can be in the right environment and still weary yourself. You need to pray, guide me, guide me, guide me. Spirit of the living God, guide me, guide me. For when he guides you, in addition to his leadership, 
there is no darkness for you eventually it may not make sense while he's guiding you ladies and gentlemen please hear me it is like driving again when you plot the map on your phone of a location it tells you okay you'll get there in one hour you see but it doesn't just tell you the location it keeps zooming and you, you keep finding out that it is helping you is that true and there are times you go to a road and it is closed it will reroute it again and show you how to still get there direction is not the problem it was not your fault someone decided to put a barricade on what would have been the road it takes guidance it now reroutes and recalculates the time guidance let's finish up the last way the holy spirit helps the believer to rise to excel to make impact and advancement for the kingdom is through the ministry of empowerment the third dimension of his help is through empowerment hmm. this is powerful he empowers us it is true and there are two dimensions to this empowerment there is the empowerment within and there is the empowerment upon this is where we'll pray the empowerment within has the assignment to produce christ likeness to produce growth and maturity every time you see spiritual immaturity there is no stature and character in the believer he has ignored the ministry of empowerment within he said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. When the Holy Spirit empowers you, regardless where you came from, regardless the natural traits and limitations that came with where you came from, he will grant you grace. There are times that you who should be angry and speak to anybody and say, when I'm angry, even God gives way. You see, all those kinds of stains, they, they fade away because there is an empowerment within most of us do not have that strength in the inner man the bible says in ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 i like amplified it says finally be strong in the lord amplified says draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him there is an implication if christ dwells in you in truth there must be an effulgence of the character of the kingdom is that true I should know that Christ is at work in you because it should be difficult to find out whether you are an Igbo man or Yoruba or Hausa. I should even be at a loss trying to trace you to an earthly place because you have been so transformed. You almost do not carry any negative traits that is associated with your territory. I should be surprised when you tell me, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But he's walked upon me listen to me it is not enough to just embrace the engracing the anointing the empowerment of the spirit starts from within so you find out that he empowers you to kill some things they just die like that anger bitterness all of these things your life changes people who look at you and say i used to know this person but you are changed not by your ability but by the ability of the spirit the empowerment within produces Christ-likeness, produces growth and maturity, stamina within. Then, the empowerment upon. In fact, let's look at Ezekiel 36, 27. Let me just give that one scripture. My apologies for stretching the time. It says, and I will put my spirit within you. Say within you. Someone say within you. And cause you to walk in my status, it says, and you shall keep my judgments and do them why because there is an empowerment within within how do you love in such a wicked world how do you show kindness in such a wicked world you have to be empowered your feelings will betray you a thousand times you will need an empowerment from within most people what you call the fruit of the spirit you see listen you can impart a gift to a handkerchief but you can impart the fruit of the spirit to a handkerchief 
A gift can come on anything animate or inanimate, but a fruit is proof of maturity. There is no tree that has a fruit at infancy. For every single gift, he matched it with a corresponding fruit. By the time the workings of the spirit is within you, let me tell you sincerely, you will truly become another man. That when people look at you, the only example they can tell is Jesus Christ. And it does not matter the background. It's a progressive work of the spirit, but that it is sponsored by the empowerment of the spirit. And so you can love even when it, is, it does not seem possible to love. You can give. You can be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. Are we together? You who would not even help children before. Now something has happened to you, you are changed. Let me tell you the truth. I submit to you that if you have walked with the Holy Spirit and it does not translate to potent conversion from within, either your experience is a lie or you have not maximized that ministry of empowerment within. Hallelujah. Because it does not seem marketable to embrace the power within. Nobody will most likely sow a seed for you for being very nice. If you, if you raise somebody from a wheelchair quickly, he can say, come and take this estate and go. But for being a person of solid character, the results usually take a long time before you see the benefits. So most people will not want to pursue that. It is easy to pursue the one that brings, has a lot of charismatism around it. But you see, in the realm of the spirit, let me tell you, the things that may not seem to matter in this realm, that is what measures stature in the spirit. Are we together? It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. There was a mindset, there was an understanding, the workings of the spirit, hanging on the cross and yet looking at John and looking at all these people. Same thing happened to the Matthias, Philip, uh, uh, when, when Philip was, uh, Stephen was about to be Matthias. Empowerment within and then now empowerment upon. Micah 3.8. Micah 3.8. The spirit helpeth. But truly I am full of power. How? By the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power. Power to do. Power to manifest. Power to go to the nations. Power to pray. Power to heal the sick. Power to redefine possibilities in the lives of people. No man was born automatically with power, ladies and gentlemen. Men and women, by blindly walking with this spirit of grace, they encounter tremendous levels of power. I can tell you with all humility, if you truly encounter the genuine power of the Holy Spirit, not a semblance of it, your life will never be the same. Not as a preacher, not as a businessman. You may have heard me say it. He said, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. He does not anoint cups. The cup only shows what is on your head. If your cup is empty, don't blame the cup. It is that there is nothing on your head. You anoint my head, it is not my head that shows it. My cup runneth over. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. We're going to pray now. Look at what the Bible says. This will be my parting scripture. I can do what an arrogant statement. How can a man stay in the world of men, Pastor Jerry, and dare to make such a statement? You can do all things. Do you know how many things are there to be done? I can do all things means I can go anywhere. I can see anybody. How dare you make such a statement? Where did you come from? Who is your father? What leverage did he give you? Yet the apostle will say, regardless what you bring before me, here is my verdict. I can do how many things <laughs> now listen 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 
you go and stand in front of the road in your city and shout this statement and see how many people will look at you and say I used to respect you thinking you are humble but I'm disappointed you can do all things how do you talk to a man who does not want to talk to you it's part of all things how do you raise the money to build something of a, a multi-billion project with integrity how do you lay hands on someone who has been sick for 25 years stage 4 cancer I can do all things please hear me run conference I came to release a grace on you tonight please listen please listen I want to show you a mystery and then we'll pray I can do all things who makes such a statement in our world today did you not know what happened during COVID you can do all things are you the one who keeps your life Paul would say, I can do all things. If he stopped there, we would have edited that statement and charged him for foolishness, immaturity, pride, and the manifestation of the flesh. If Paul stopped there with those five words, we would even legitimately edit that and strike it and say in learning Paul learn other aspects but when you get here jump it but here is my message tonight leave the first five read the remaining one to read through Christ one more time now read the first five then finish it with the first five are you ready one to read You didn't get it right. Through Christ, which strengthened me, I can do all things. So he tells you, if you see me moving from nation to nation, be careful while you clap. Explain there is an agency. When you see that I can do all things, it is not because I am sufficient in myself. I have found a secret in the spirit that the Christ can strengthen a man. That Christ can strengthen a business, can strengthen a man of God, and not ordinary man. You can dare to say, regardless the causes, regardless the limitations within my city, regardless what they think can come out or cannot come out of me, that here is my verdict on the strength of this revelation. I can do all things, not some things. To say some things will be limiting the power that backs me through Christ through Christ which strengtheneth me so when you hear the testimonies that happen through the prayer platforms when you see the mighty things that God is doing through your ministry thank God for the man but make sure you look well see the olive trees too make sure you look well and see that beyond ordinary men is a mighty God that stands behind them. No man can just make progress. Men do not rise just by willpower. Hear me? It takes more than willpower. It takes more than determination. Every factor fails when the Holy Ghost is not there value fails when it's not there knowledge fails when it's not there skill will be barren and important when it's not there i can do all things i can do all things you may be ordinary my precious brother my precious sister you may be ordinary watching from across the globe wondering can anything good come out of my life i introduce you to the ministry of the helper the paraclete he is not a politician he is not a king he's not an elected person the spirit of the living god who helps ordinary men 
to command tremendous levels of power. Can I tell you? Never laugh at a man who has submitted to the ministry and the help of the Holy Spirit. You will bury your head in shame for the rest of your life. Many of you will prefer running around looking for men and women of influence who can help you directly and yet ignore the greatest helper did the bible not say except the lord builds a house it says they labor in vain he never said they labor they will not labor but it is in vain that build it that except the lord watches the city the watchman watched but in vain the bible says that it is vain to wake up early in the morning nigerians hear me and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow only god can give men rest man of god respectfully speaking please hear me there is a fountain that is greater than your limitation my uncle promised to give me money to build a church is a recipe for frustration when I send you, lackest thou anything? The helper. We stand today by the privilege of God's grace as ordinary men who have been helped by God. He signed his signature upon our lives that the nation may learn the spirit again. That when an ordinary man unites with an extraordinary God the destiny becomes extraordinary so he says there is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power man of God hear me do not give up on your call and don't try to look for fame and try to move around saying invite me leave all that nonsense and stay with the Holy Spirit stay with the Holy Spirit you're a music artist. Don't jump from pillar to post saying, stay with the Holy Spirit. The greatest way to make yourself known is to make him known. Stay with the Spirit of God. In the place of prayer, in the place of fellowship, in the place of building. You see, let me warn you. Let me warn you. Walking with the Holy Spirit is usually not profitable when you start. So I warn you so that Satan who is the master of the flesh does not beguile you into naming your submission to him a waste of your time. If it is God you are walking with, you will be a fool for a very long time before the wisdom behind his dealings with you is revealed. So I'm giving you a word of caution. <laughs> Jesus was born of the spirit but it took him 30 years. Of living supposedly an aimless life but at 30 when he came in power in three and a half years he wrote something that cannot be erased forever when you walk with the Holy Spirit let me tell you the truth there is a side effect because you will have to give up on your will many times and that will put you in a position of perpetual insecurity in the flesh I don't know the name of where I'm going but I trust you who is leading me and like a baby who is walking even in the midst of your confusion one step after another while people laugh at you you keep following at a time you will ask yourself god where are we going what are you doing with my life but i can leave you with an assurance if it is the god of the bible leading you the day he presents you to your world like a trophy he will sign upon your life and it will become clear to all men that the god of the universe has shown you help Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, 
it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 